This is Kicking and Streaming Podcast, a binge watcher's guide to streaming movies, TV series, and stuff. Here are your hosts, Graham and Jocelyn. And hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Kicking and Streaming Podcast. Today, uh, I am happy to report that we're back, and we're back better than ever. <laughs> With me is the fantastic Jojo, the only co-host I've ever had, the only co-host I will ever had. I'm telling you <laughs> right now. So don't be quitting on me, Jojo. <laughs> <laughs> Not quitting on you. <laughs> <laughs> How you been, Jojo? I've been pretty good. How about you? Uh, yeah, it's been an eventful week, hasn't it? <laughs> There's quite a few things we can talk about, but again... That will derail the, the entire podcast. And, yeah, and yeah. Podcast don't. I mean, we delve into politics from here, from here, uh, one day to another, but that's not our forte. No. So let's go there. Huh? No. The, the, the only thing that I want to say is that whoever out there got cursed with the "May you live in interesting times" curse, would you please go apologize to whoever <laughs> that was? Um, and 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 get the bad voodoo or whatever you know like fixed so that we can move yeah. on. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Look, I, you know the bumper sticker you're never going to see is "I love 2020." <laughs> <laughs> 2020 best year ever. Best year ever. <laughs> That's never going to happen, man. That yeah. is never going to happen. I don't think so. <laughs> Maybe somewhere else, but not here. <laughs> My goodness. Uh, well, so uh, apart from an eventful week, we also have a very eventful and interesting show to talk about today. We do. Um, this is one of those things that kept popping up always for at least a year or so on my, you know, whenever I opened Amazon Prime because I have BritBox through Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I downloaded the app for BritBox, and I swear to you, I don't even know what my username and password is. <laughs> <laughs> that That's nice. how I get to it too. Is through it through. That's how we use ours account is through Amazon. So I I don't know. I have no idea either. <laughs> So that's that's where we are. And so I was like, okay, I'm finally going to watch these because, and here's the thing, we're talking about this show called A Confession. That's uh, the show we are going to discuss today. And I, I don't think there's going to be a second or third or there's not going to be more seasons of this. Was sort of like a um, what what would you call it? Like a mini series? Yeah, like a, a mini series. A, a almost a mini documentary sort of a dramatization, yes. but, a but a right. Right. Based on right. a true story. Yes. And so there's not going to be another season of this. This was based on a book written by, um, the, the man who is the main character in this show, but it is starring, uh, Martin Freeman, except that on the poster, Martin Freeman does not look a lot like Martin Freeman. So until I read the little blurb, I didn't know that was Martin Freeman. Yeah, I agree so with I'm you. I'm going to watch that. <laughs> 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 and typically I feel like Martin Freeman always looks like Martin Freeman. Like even when he was playing um, um, Bilbo Baggins, right? Bilbo Baggins, The Hobbit. Yeah, I, yeah. I, even then I was like, oh, that's Martin Freeman. But it was just Martin Freeman. I, with sideburns and big feet. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, right. yeah, I agree. I, I was, I, when I, you had talked about it, I was like, have I found the right show? Because that doesn't look like Martin Freeman, but I think it is. <laughs> so that's exactly what happened to me for a whole year. And, and so I finally decided I've been watching, I've been binge watching everything on, on, on BritBox. And, Although BritBox, most of their shows are ITV and BBC shows, they also started doing their own little original shows. Yes. And this, a confession, happened to be a BritBox original. Yes. So I started watching it, and I like it, because uh, the first thing that called my attention was the fact that it started as if it were a documentary, right? With the little, uh, you know, uh, with the little, you know, uh, uh, what you call it? 
black screen and in the white letters sort of like giving you an explanation of what you're about to see and i was like okay i i probably will be watching this in a quick google let me know how many baftas and these and that and then once the cast started to appear and i'm like oh this is some serious stuff it's not only martin freeman we've got some people in here right yes so yes. i went for it and i have to tell you jojo i freaking loved it absolutely brilliant show there's a lot to talk about though but absolutely brilliant show tell me what you think of it yeah um i i, I it had never even showed up in my um suggestions strangely um and so when you talked about it i was like never heard of it but i'm <laughs> down to try it and uh as you said it's 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 a great show and it's um very underrated i feel like i like i i i didn't yeah. hear anything about it at all um i'm sure it was much bigger in the uk but um i feel like a lot of more americans would enjoy this and and should learn about it and that's why we're doing a show about it <laughs> yes that's exactly why we are doing a show about it because um there's a lot of juxtapositions in terms of the law here and in, in how it worked out over there. Yes. And yes. Uh, um, that's that's where we are going. So before we get into everything, Jojo, it is that time where you do your thing and tell <laughs> people in a nutshell what is it that this show is about. And uh, you know, I'm I'm just gonna sit here and watch you do your thing. That's what you do, right? <laughs> That's me, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> the synopsonizer. That's, that's Yo, synopsis. I kind of like that. Don't get me Synops wrong. Yeah, the synopsonizer is is a thing. I, I'm, we are going to make it a thing, just so you know. I am playing. I, I, I want a title title card. I want the lower third. Jocelyn. Synopsonizer. <laughs> um, so this, this is based on a true story. Um, which we already mentioned, but but based on a true story of a missing girl uh, in sort of a small town in the UK, Wiltshire. Um, she is 22. Of course, in England, they have all of the CCTV footage, much more so than is available uh, in this country. Um, and they're able to narrow down her disappearance to about an eight-minute window. And wh what this is, is the story of the police officer of, on the case, Stephen Fulcher, decisions that he made um, that ultimately led to the arrest of the person responsible for the girl's disappearance, as well as a beautifully portrayed story about the family, um, about the suffering that they went through, about their strength, and about how the justice system works in England. Um, so it's it's a very fascinating and beautifully and delicately handled story. Yes, I, I think I think you you're absolutely right in in that it was very delicately um, handled, uh, very humanely portrayed, and. I, I like the fact that if, if they took their clues from Stephen Fulcher's book they uh, may have gone very faithfully to his words in that it doesn't seem to me that he portrayed anyone as evil. Uh, he actually, for a dude who was a, a, a detective, or who is a detective, who is in law enforcement, uh, seemed to have a great understanding of human nature without the judgmentalism that comes with it even in the case of the of the person who ended up being the abductor and so we <laughs> that's why i keep talking about the juxtaposition of this case uh to how this situation would have probably played out in the United States. So yes. that's 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 where I think I would like for Americans to watch this show because 
yes, you're going to see some human errors. You're going to see some very, um, from some mistakes that in the end shouldn't have been made mm -hmm. and in accountability should exist and you know to a certain extent those mistakes were held accountable those who made those mistakes were held accountable but also there's a question of fairness in that yes i made mistakes but i got the job done so should i be punished for that right uh so so that that here here you have a, a very fine line and I, i'd like us to discuss this because you know me <laughs> um i like i like a, as as human as i am i also i think my biggest defect is that i i can be logical to a fault <laughs> And I need you. I need your help. <laughs> Seriously. I, I know Wait, that... did you just call me illogical? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, See, you I, can I, tell I'm a wife. You can tell I'm a wife. Yeah, See how you... I... <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> and it, what, what, wait a minute. Hold up. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I think what I mean by that is that sometimes I, I, I can be way too rigid and, and almost robotic with the way I, I approach uh, things when logic and science and, and even the rule of law is, is involved. And so um, I can see some of the other point of view and I will be playing a little bit of devil, devil advocate and i need you to stop me whenever whenever you feel like i've gone too far <laughs> so so tell me in your view jojo what um what do you think of this story and if in in what way do you think it compares to our way of of carrying out law enforcement in and um, search and rescue for that matter. I, I think one of the first things that I noticed in the portrayal of this police officer, um, thanks of course to Martin Freeman, but also to the writers and the producers is I did not see someone with a God complex. Um, I did not see someone who was convinced that they had their man and they were going to do something a particular way because they had this gut feeling and they knew i i saw someone that was pretty sure they had the right person and was trying to do the right thing morally and i do believe even legally and ethically i really think that he was trying to right um and and did fail on some points there but I never got the sense that it was done as for the reason of I'm right and, and, and God's on my side. <laughs> and, and not even maybe in the sense of God, but in the sense of I, 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 I know I'm right and I, I, know I have I this, this belief. Right. Yeah, I know that, I have that, that this. I, I, yes, that's the word arrogance. I, I did not get that, um, which I think sometimes you do see in American television with law enforcement. Um, I think you definitely see a lot of um, detectives or, or even lower uh, portrayed as, oh, they're, they, they're going to get their man, almost Superman-like, you know? Right. And um, I, didn't, I didn't see that here. I just saw a bunch of human beings <laughs> trying to do their best um, and sometimes failing. And I felt like that was a refreshing view of, of things um, because that's really what life ought to be <laughs> you know we, we really none of us need to have a, a quote unquote god complex because it's just it's always going to come back and, and bite you in the ass because yeah. none of honestly it is at some point you may be right 99.9 percent .9 of the time but that 0.1 percent is going to bite you in the ass and bite you hard Aaron failure is is um 
the way that scientific uh, projects are carried out. And whenever you approach anything in life with, with, with this kind of conviction that I should view this from a point of view, from a scientific point of view, even though there are human lives involved, and even though there are emotions, strong emotions involved, but I cannot let those emotions, neither from the family, nor from, my, from the town itself that is, you know, open arms, and the force itself, uh, like the police force itself, like this is a small town, this kind of shit don't happen here. So you right. better fix this, right? Right, right. And this dude was like, "Yeah, I, I I can fix it, but let's 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 follow the facts." Yes. And I think for me, where I would have seen this, where like, and and please do not, for for our listeners, do not interpret this as me shitting on on American law enforcement. That's not my. That's not our intention. That's not my intention, at least at all. And I know you, George, you don't have a problem. Uh, the, 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 the thing that we're trying to point out here is how many times we have seen American law enforcement rely more on gut feelings and um, in, in this overconfidence of, I know what I'm doing, so I must be right and completely mess up this kind of situations in fact if you are if you've seen on netflix making a murder you will understand what we're talking about here right <laughs> you will understand yep i i actually was gonna say just to interject i i started watching um cold case files classic on netflix um, just picking and choosing here and there what they have available. And exactly what you said is something that is quite often said from the officers who failed to close the original case. I had a feeling. I had a feeling. I just knew. I just yeah. knew. I just knew. You will hear that over and over again. It's not something mm -hmm. that we're making up. It's from the mouths of the actual officers <laughs> themselves. I had a feeling. I just knew. And then another officer will come along 20 years later, 10 years later, 30 years later, yeah. review the case and be like, well, let's run DNA. Let's do this. Wait, nobody ever followed up on that. And suddenly that I just knew isn't right always. Once in a I while it was. Knew. Once in a while it is right. Of course it is going to be right because you've had a lot of dealing with people and you understand human nature, but you have to be able to have the science and the facts to back up your I just news. Yeah, that's <laughs> I just knew. That's right. That's right. And that's that's the biggest so the, 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 the miscarriage of justice that we've we've seen in that now thanks to technology and thanks to you know everybody being able to to on the spot record what's happening, uh, give us a, a clue as to the mindset of people in law enforcement, especially in the United States. And and um and here this is not this is not what happened here. Uh and what the one moment, the one moment Stephen Fulcher went with his gut, he actually blew it. Yes. Isn't it? The yes. one moment that he followed, he stepped out of of the norm to do what he thought was right, which ultimately was the right thing. Yes. Right? Yes. He blew it. Yes. And so it begs the question, well, is, you know, following procedure always the right thing to do or not? Right? But I can't help but think, Jojo, and I, I want to hear your opinion on that. The first 10 minutes of the show, on the first episode, I got to a point where I'm like, if these guys were American, they would have thought they solved the case already. Because when, of when they interviewed the boyfriend. Yes. 
because that's the way it's all, it always is, right? Because it's it's always about well, he fits the profile. It's always the, clo- the the boyfriend. It's always the family. It's always, and so what we're going to do now is sit this guy in a small room for twelve hours, asking ask him the same questions over and over and over again until the moment that we've asked him. He's answered so many times that he's incapable of being consistent with his answers. And ha, I fucking got you. And even if you don't have a body, even if you don't have anything, that's your guy. And that's like, that is my fear. And don't get me wrong. I have the right to have all of these fears in, in terms of, of of how law enforcement is carried out here. I I have all the <laughs> I have all the particular uh, 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 qualities maybe. Um, like I I I checked a lot of boxes <laughs> in that respect. Um, to be perfectly honest with you, and I probably have never said this to anyone, but when. Uh, so my wife has this tendency to like at least once a year fall like for some reason something will happen she'll trip and fall like she can she has periods of time in the year when she gets completely clumsy and i've always been absolutely afraid of these things of these moments because i don't want that one day she may have so she may suffer one of one of these one of those falls and is fatal because i know that once north carolina police start looking at me i'm not gonna be it's not gonna be good for me do you know what i mean even if even if i could even if i could find a fucking expert that explains all the reasons why but yeah it was the black guy in an interracial relationship that did, that did it you know what i mean and so this is the reason why I, and, and so maybe this is my bias i'm i'm not i'm not saying that i don't have a personal bias but i can't help but think that this kid the boyfriend of uh, sean o'callaghan would have been in far more trouble and probably would have been wrongly accused had this case been investigated in the United States. So tell me if you think I'm wrong or tell me if you can see it going in another way. I I agree with you. I agree with you based on the procedural TV shows I've watched, based on the cold case files I've just watched, um, based on another documentary I've watched recently that there is you will talk to anybody who's close female relative or or wife or lover died or was injured to a point where she could not speak and they will say the cops always come to you first you know the cops always say it's the boyfriend or it's the husband or whatever first i believe with good reason in the united yeah. states yeah. absolutely with good reason in the united states but I don't understand the point of it getting down to tunnel vision. So, okay, so in this case, let's say that that they decided, oh, I've got a gut feeling it's it's the boyfriend, and they haul him in and they do that 12-hour interrogation. Right. Okay, you want to do that? Great. But spend some of your resources reviewing the CCTV, CCTV footage, reviewing right. other sources, whereas it seems like in the television I've watched, I'm not a police officer. I have not been in a police station for any reason other than, <laughs> you know. But, like, I, I don't, I can only go off of what I've seen, but it really doesn't, it seems as though, okay, they decide it's this guy, and then all of the resources get pulled into that one yeah. room, that yeah. one one interview room, and there's no, oh, let's pursue this avenue. Let's see this. Let's see that. And I... I also don't understand that because that seems very short-sighted to me from a prosecution's view yep. in, well, if we're only going to put this down to a confession, I need you to get me more evidence. I need you to prove right. to me that this guy doesn't have an alibi. But that, I don't know. So I 
I agree with you. I agree with you that it there is a bias, uh, it seems, in law enforcement to concentrate very hard on the boyfriend, the husband, the significant other, um, much more so than what the other op- uh, options are, the other perpetrators might have been. And, and the problem with that is that it always also based on how likable or yes. not this person may be. Yes. And that's the crazy thing. Yes. Because I, I, I think we've talked about this when, when I've told you, like, whenever I hear a law enforcer in, in those procedural TV shows, like, well, when we broke the news to him, his reaction didn't quite fit. Like, right. he, like I've never seen somebody not cry when they're here. And like, oh, so would you just learned that your wife died, was murdered, and you decided to go shopping? you just like, dude, please understand that the human being is not a machine that will always function the same way. Yes. And we all have different cultural upbringings as well. Just because it doesn't fit your idea of what would happen in your culture doesn't mean that this person wasn't raised a different way or have a completely different way of looking at things. The other thing, too, is people can be totally unlikable. The guy can be a complete asshole, a prick. He can be an adulterer. He can be lots of things, but that does not make him a murderer. Right. Right. (laughs) Absolutely right. And that's 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 where I. I'm always like, well, f- f- like, how short-sighted can you be? Right? Yes, it, you're right. This guy is 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 an absolute douchebag. But have you looked at all the scenarios, right? right. And in the case of Sean O'Callaghan's boyfriend, well, he wasn't an absolute douchebag. He was, he was, I mean, proper shook up in and yes. in, in in anguish and blaming himself because you know, um. As it happened, his girlfriend went on a night out with, with her girlfriends and he went on a night out with his mates and boom, that happened. Um, but again, I can't help but think that this guy would have been in far more trouble had he been here. Let's talk about the two families. The Again, the we are seeing, we, we, we're going to be using a lot of contrast and juxtaposition uh, between the two families. So you have the O'Callaghan family, right? Mm-hmm. And um, Siobhan Finneran is the the mother in this case? Yes. She's the o- o- O'Callaghan girl's mother. And you have Imelda Staunton. Yes. Who is the mother of, what was the name of the other of the other child, uh, Becky. 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 Right. Uh, for some reason, it, it reminded me a little bit of when we talked about unbelievable. Do you remember? Yes. How yes. Uh, we saw how the pursuit of justice for one person based on social status was different than the other person, right? Uh, on, in unbelievable. Yes. And in this case, it was the fact that, you know, uh, one girl was the good girl and she was a student. She was a college student and blah, 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 in, in, in the case of unbelievable. And the other girl who was a victim too, was a f- raised in foster care and had, had some run-ins with the law and her story couldn't be believed because she knows how to fake it or whatever, right? In the case of of Sean O'Callaghan and Becky, you had a situation similar to this, but it wasn't the police that um, that made that distinction. It was rather the O'Callaghan mother who simply couldn't bring herself to accept that the carrying of justice for her girl, for for Sean, could be mixed up with carrying justice for Becky, who was a drug addict and a prostitute. So, what what do you think of this case here? What how, how did that hit you? 
I, it actually made me think again of the procedural shows that I've been watching some of lately, because there was a, a, a an episode I watched where they talked about, and, and this is this is words from law enforcement in America. They talked about a true victim. A true victim is someone who is, if you will, pure as the driven snow, um, huh. and of a middle class background. Um, you know, absolutely no brushes with the law. You know, every, and that sort of thing. And then you have a victim who is someone who is a sex worker, a drug addict, uh, promiscuous, out too late, um, something that is subjective, absolutely, as opposed to being objective. And um, they kept talking about wanting, we want justice for the true victims, the true victims. The, this one really stuck with me because this was a true victim. And I thought they're, they're all true victims. They, right. they all died horribly um, in this particular episode. You know, they all had horrible things done to them. It really doesn't matter what they were doing before this happened. Um, at that point, they all became true victims. So I... I see a lot of that mentality, and that, of course, is not just in law enforcement. That's in the whole world. Yes. Is, is, you know, humans everywhere seem to want to blame someone who's had something horrible happen to them on the person who had the something horrible happen to them. And I don't understand that. Um, I really don't understand that. But it, it, it is prevalent. It is the worldview for a lot of folks, and uh, we need to stop it. <laughs> yes, we need we need to stop it, folks, because it's just. It, it, I understood why the mom felt that way because, like I said, it is a worldview, and I could understand her trying to say, in a way. <sighs> I don't know. Like maybe her brain was like, maybe he got them confused. Maybe he thought this. Maybe he thought that. You know, and yeah. and and trying to justify away what happened to her daughter as well. It wouldn't have happened to her, but he got confused and thought she was a prostitute. Right. I just. I. I just. I. 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 But saying that your pain is more worthy than another person's pain is not something that we should be trying to take ownership of and, and and she was so desperate to make that distinction which is the thing that bothered me the most is that yeah. uh, you know she is from your town too yeah she's been missing for longer than your daughter has been missing and um there was such distinction between the two mothers in that you could see becky's mother also suffering so genuinely yes. because of what happened to Sean. Yes. And, and she wanted to be a friend. She wanted to be a neighbor and asked to meet with this, uh, with, with, uh, this lady, Elaine. And she got rejected. Yeah. That is amazing to me. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Yeah. You know. Um, so the politics of this, what did you think? Because behind the scene, it seems like the police force, especially the, the bosses of uh, Stephen Fulcher, were more interested in how the town was going to come out of this, like in, in terms of image and how pleased the government, uh, the higher ops were going to be about the outcome. And even though Steve Fulcher managed to get justice for everybody, but they were very much ready to throw him under the bus instead of standing with him, which is the only contrast, the only 
one of the differences that I can see from what happened over there and how it would have another difference that I see from what happened over there and how it would have happened here in the US. Because from time to time, uh, some people, whether vi um, vitriolic or not, refer to the police as a legal gang in the United States because of that idea of standing always together behind each other. And so I could I, I wouldn't I couldn't see I couldn't possibly see uh Steve Fulcher being thrown out uh, under the bus even with the legal challenges that arose from the manner in which he obtained the confession. What do you think? Yes. Um I hadn't thought about that, but with, because even law enforcement themselves will say that it's a brotherhood, you know, it's, it's, right. it's, it's a brotherhood as opposed to a, a job or whatever. And I do see there being a lot more protection between the ranks um, than there seem to be in this case. Um, <clears throat> and I've, you know, I've read, a lot of British books. Um, Tana French is a is a great author of procedural uh, police novels, and uh, it's it's very similar there too. It's very much a everything that I've read with her is it's very much a a, a CYA right. <laughs> essentially with with everybody. There's no like like brotherhood or camaraderie really. It's a, well, you fucked up, so bye. <laughs> yep, yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm going to keep my hands clean of you. And I, I guess you saw, you would see that too at the beginning of the episode, uh, the beginning of the series with the, the police officer where they, they counseled um, Stephen Fulcher to stay away from the officer. Don't, don't meet with the officer that was, that was being reprimanded or investigated, yep. I should say. Um, I guess you kind of saw that there too, whereas I think, I don't know that that would necessarily have happened here in the sense of a higher up saying, oh, don't talk to him. They probably would have been like, yeah, whatever, have a beer with him if you want. Right, right. You I know, mean, it, 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 there was an investigation and um, the while the investigation is ongoing, you can't just declare somebody persona non grata. It, it, that's not the way it works, is it? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And this guy... The guy in question, when you start watching the show, you will realize that he had been me too and um, possibly with reasons, but, you know, the, the truth never came out. Um, you know, justice was not carried out in the way that things ended up, right? Yeah. Um, so, have we touched on everything about the... <laughs> <laughs> about this show <laughs> because I, I i was about to enter into the cast but i'm i i i want to circle back the difference in the parenting you you had in both cases of the two girls on sean o'callaghan and in the in the case of becky you had uh parents that were separated that were no longer a couple yet you could see that there was this sense of we're in this together between one family and the other family, it was like, you fucked up, you're the bad parent. And that's why Becky got in drugs. That's why she's disappeared. Having said that, the dad who, Becky's dad, who ended up basically causing all the commotion that ended up ruining Steve Fulcher's life and career as a police, as a, as a police officer, he hadn't seen the daughter for as long as, as no one had seen her either. Right. But I don't see, and I don't know the truth about that, but at, in the, in the, movie at least in in the series at least you never see him putting any effort at finding her yeah the mom yeah. the character played by imelda stanton was the only one 
trying to find her daughter. As a matter of fact, they concocted her, his family, the dad's family, concocted the story of having seen her a few years back in that she was practically rehabilitated and, and leading a good life, if you will. Yeah. Isn't that correct? Yes. <laughs> and and um, I don't know what would cause somebody to do that, to, to, to purposefully foil any sort of attempt to look for a child to to put the mother off to just be like oh well, we saw her a couple of years ago we had a big a bit of a cuddle i think that's what he said we had a bit of a cuddle mm -hmm. and uh, and she told me everything was good and such and such saw her on that I, I don't understand that mindset in the slightest um and i i i, I don't i don't get it and uh it it gave the mom obviously false hope at right. the time but also false hope when there was the report of a body discovered because they were like oh well it had to be this time frame and it, at first she's like oh well then it can't possibly be her because dad saw her and cousin saw her and so um that's heartbreaking to, and I, I i can't imagine the emotional fallout knowing that the father of your child that is now dead lied to you about them about seeing them alive like that's the emotional repercussions of that. Even though you aren't together anymore, the knowing that the father of your child would tell that huge of a lie just to get you off their back, I assume. I, I, I don't know how you recover from that kind of, of, of depth of deception. And that's what's going, that's, that was going to be my question. Why do you think they concocted this story? I mean, come on, seriously, uh, you know, is it because, as you said, did they just want, oh, we just want her to shut up, <laughs> you know? That's all but, I can think of, honestly, is we let's get mom to shut up. Let's get her to stop looking. She's embarrassing us. She's calling around to all these clubs. You know, we're, it's a small town. Words be getting around. I don't know. That's all I can think of. But it's, it's a pretty shitty motive, honestly. It's a very self-serving one. And then all of a sudden, he became like the most concerned parent to the point of wanting to, you know, create all of this kerfuffle. Yeah. You know, but he was, and that's, that's the narcissistic father, right? He was more focused on fucking up, you know, because obviously the blame has to go to someone else, right? Yeah. So he was more yes. interested in ruining Steve Fulcher's career than saying, Maybe if I had been a better father, maybe if I had been more present in my daughter's life, maybe if I had been more um, encouraging, more, you know, more of a father, if I had been a better, uh, more of a father to her, you know, she wouldn't have ended up, there's no guarantee, of course, that wouldn't have, a, that wouldn't have happened, but I think this guy, instead of dealing with his own guilt, he was desperate to find a culpable of yeah. his daughter's disappearance. But also there was a little bit of narcissism. There was a bit of like, I want to come out good. I want people to talk about me as the father who cared so much about his daughter that he would go to the extreme of ruining this guy's career yeah it wasn't and, about him. he made it about himself anyway. and and to the point of um i actually read that the the father this is in real life now um has has asked them to take the parts out with him in it um oh. because it's it's put him in a bad light and people are are it's ruined his life people have a bad opinion of him now and i'm like Dude, you are a douchebag. <laughs> your 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 daughter is dead. This was about your daughter. It was never about <laughs> you. What in the hell, man? I I don't I don't. So reading that when he and the the there's interviews with him saying it's it's ruined my life. I'm like, who gives a I, flying fuck about your yeah, life, dude? I'm yes. sorry, dude, but who cares? I don't care. The only reason that you're in the news right now is because you gave this interview saying it's ruined your life. <laughs> Shut up. Because at the end of the day, he has to be, you know, 
Yeah. He has to be. He has it, to it be has here. to be a. It has to be about him. Has to be about him. Has to be about. About him. Has so. To be about him. so you've heard us talk about uh, Martin Freeman, um, Siobhan Finnery, and um, Imelda Stanton. Let's go into into the cast a little bit because again, this show won some very important awards. Uh, for a miniseries, and um, the acting was what everybody talked about, right? So, I I was surprised to see Martin Freeman in this in this role. I don't know why, but I was surprised to see Martin Freeman in this role. I wasn't surprised that he freaking nailed it. But I, I was like, because in my view, Martin Freeman is a big star, right? Martin Freeman is a big star, and this yeah. is TV. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That was my thing. This is TV, and this was a Britbox original. <laughs> you know, Britbox is not even big in in the UK. Britbox is being is big with us. <laughs> <You know. laughs> It must be in you and me. Because <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Britbox is just a combination of things created by ITV and BBC. They came together like, let's just drop all of this shit in a in a server and create our own sort of like British Netflix or whatever, right? Yeah. Yeah. But for a company that is starting to do its own little original shows, they managed to get some real heavy hitters yeah. in this thing, right? So what do you think? Of, what, what do you think? What, what do you expect to see next <laughs> going forward? They, they have, they've set themselves a very high bar, uh, <laughs> a very, very high bar. So uh, I would expect as much quality from them. Right. And I remember we talked about last week vaguely that they even got Rob Lowe to to do a show for them, which is actually ended up being a very good show, like six episodes. I watched the whole thing and I'm like, huh, this is good. <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, to be honest with you, like I'm I'm uh, I'm impressed because their original shows are turning heads. And as you said, they've set themselves very, they set themselves very, very high bars. Um, so what do you know of uh, Shabon Finneran? I, I, I know Imelda Staunton, but I don't have, I don't know much of uh, Shabon Finneran. What do you know of her? What, what have you seen her on before? Um, I feel like I saw her when, when she was on Downton Abbey. Uh -huh. Um, that's been such a long time ago, though. I, I honestly think that's the only thing that she's been in that I've, that I've seen. Um, just quickly looking at her bio. Um, right. I, I, I don't, but I feel like I've seen her in other things. It's like, wait, that's really all she was in. But, um, so, uh, but she, she was very, very good in this. And, um, I thought. It was a, 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 a performance that, or a portrayal that, that could have probably been easy to make more sympathetic. Yeah. And, yeah. But she didn't go that route. She went, because one of the first scenes with her, I was like, holy crap, her mom's a bitch. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I was like, wow. Um, so she, she didn't go that route. She didn't. She did not make this a, really a sympathetic character. You felt the pa character's pain, but she didn't make this into a nice person. Right, and that and that was the weird thing for me because, like I said, she was not a likable character, but you couldn't also help but feel her pain and feel empathy for her, um, and 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 have the hopes that she had. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that yeah. is a fantastic actress in that respect, isn't it? Yeah. 
Yes, and I, I felt that she took the progression of what happened and the and the progression of the news and just the way the timeline went. I thought she sh really showed us the the crumbling of this person, yes. the, the, the frantically trying to keep the pieces together, um, the lashing out. Um, yeah. I really thought she did a, a, a beautiful job of portraying this this character. Um, who, like I said, she could have made very sympathetic if she'd wanted to, um, but didn't. And I, I'm glad that the the producers and the writers, you know, didn't make that happen either, because I think we uh, probably got a more accurate portrayal. Well, I suppose my question to you in that respect is, do you think that was liberty that she, uh, creative liberty that she took, or, well, neither you or I have read the book, or do you think that was the portrayal uh, on Stephen Fulcher's book? I th I think she must have followed the book, um, I, I, honestly, because I don't really see any reason otherwise um, to, to make the character the way she was. If it was fiction, of course, it would be, oh, well, it's to make a, a great character. But with right. this being true life and with the possibility of libel and all that kind of thing, I, I feel like I, the character the way she was, or at least the way she presented herself to who was involved in the case. Yeah, yeah. I I think she was, I think she was fantastic in, in the way that she made you um, hate but yet still feel yeah. for 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 this person. Yeah. Right? She's 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 not likable. She is she is not someone I would want to sit down and have a beer with. Right. Um but at the same time I you know when she, she got the news of of her daughter's death and the reaction there um you know, you felt that. I, I actually, there was a, a, I thought a kind of a, a neat filming technique, I guess, that they used there and that you were behind glass when the family got the news. So you felt like an outsider looking into them getting the news. Right. And I, I felt like that was a really good way to portray the fact that if you haven't had this happen to you, you can't completely understand it. You're going to be an outsider looking in. And, um, I, I just this this was just handled so so beautifully yes. so so delicately. Yes, this 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 was this was a perfectly created and, and conceived show. Yeah, and everybody's idea of what this show should look like, I think, was was carried out. Yeah, and the cast was brilliant. Yeah, Let's talk about Imelda Staunton. Um, yeah. I was more surprised to see Imelda Staunton in the show than than seeing Martin Freeman, to be honest with you. Because, like, this lady right there is, um, I mean, she's like, it's like seeing Meryl Streep, maybe. <laughs> yeah doing tv you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like i'm not talking about like doing it hbo tv <laughs> i'm not talking about meryl streep doing hbo tv i'm talking about you know meryl streep doing i don't know nbc tv or, or something like that <laughs> you know <laughs> I was like, what? on CBS or something. Right. <laughs> right. I was like, whoa. But um, even based on the last few words about Karen Edwards, I feel like Imelda Staunton captivated the essence of that lady almost to an effect of being saintly. Yeah. To be honest with you, I was like, wow, what dedication to to being mom, to being she was she was a rock. Yeah. She was a rock, man. And in the the very 
supportive giant teddy bear of a husband yes. that she had. Yes. What a, what a fantastic portrayal, eh? Yes, yes. He, he <laughs> you know, that wasn't his child by birth, but you you knew that he he loved her as much as if she were. Yes, yes. He, so. he felt he he feels for her, and it was it was amazing. I was I was. I was enamored by this by this little couple yeah. right there. And in yeah. the end, when they tell you, you know, the actuality of them and you know that well, let, let's let the audience find out <laughs> what ended up happening with the husband. But yeah, um phenomenal portrayal of a of a grieving mother by Imelda Staunton. And she could have do you remember we talked about and i can't remember the actress we we kind of almost crapped on once because we felt like they approached a role in a very cavalier manner uh, like i'm too good for this shit but the money is good yeah uh, I, I think i think we talked about someone like that before i can't i think it was um, about Alfred Alfre Woodard in the in C by Apple TV that we felt like yes come on you could have done better yes yes <laughs> yeah. yes yes <laughs> and I thought that Imelda Staunton being who she is she could have been like yeah money is good I'm just going to wing it and do these six episodes and call it a day but she put everything she had in it. Yeah, I felt it, feel like she felt like she. It felt as though she accepted the part and was accepted it in part so that she could bring as accurate a portrayal as possible to the screen of a of a grieving mother, and not just in a sympathetic sense, um, but in a in a raw sense. You know, is it possible you think that that is because she got to know the 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 mother that she was portraying either on the book or maybe she personally met this person and had a an idea of who she was and and how to do her justice in uh, you know yeah 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 that certainly certainly could be because yeah the, this lady should be proud of Karen Edwards. Should be proud of what Imelda Staunton made made of her, made yeah. her look like in our eyes. Yeah. And the supportive giant teddy bear of a husband that we're talking about was played by Peter White. Um, this is one dude that he hasn't. You know, he hasn't been like in big movies and and stuff like that. Um, but I think he's had he he had some appearances on uh, Atonement. Do you remember that movie that was like full yes. of Oscar nominations and shit? Yes. yes. Yeah, he was on Atonement. It was probably a minor appearance and. Uh, Secrets and Lies in 1996. Um, more recently in Another Year, that was 10 years ago. I seem to remember Another Year, but if you tell me, oh, that's, you know, Peter White, I'm like, no, nah, I don't know that dude. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he was also in one of my favorite movies of all time, which is Hot Fuzz. So Hot Fuzz. Yeah. I like I like his his um profile picture. You have to be a very <laughs> confident man. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, definitely. <laughs> hey, I am debating your picture, man. All right, send him this. <laughs> Hold on a second, let me grab a beer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna grab a beer and you can go ahead and click. <laughs> Now let's talk about the men of the hour, to be honest, because 
as much as as much hoopla, as much of a big deal that we've made of Martin Freeman taking this role, the guy that ended up being the star of the show and winning best BAFTA for best supporting actor is Joe Absalom. Yes. Who is this dude, man? <laughs> I I I feel like I've seen him in something. Um, I saw a few episodes of Doc Martin, so I feel like I might have seen him in that. Uh, he was in an episode of Death in Paradise. Um, but yeah, it's, he's kind of like one of one of those guys. But he he's very very good in this. Um, yes, he has shockingly blue eyes, like <laughs> startlingly blue eyes, um, and. It's almost a little creepy, too, as to how much he actually looks like, in real life, the character that he's portraying. Is of, that so? Yeah, of um, uh, Christopher Hollowell. He, he, they look very, very similar in bone structure, sort of the, the oh, gaunt wow. face and the cheekbones and stuff. So um, I, I don't know if he got to meet with him and maybe worked on some of his body language or mannerisms or something, but he's um, he does a great great job of making this character who has done awful things but is also still a human being right still still a person (laughs) yes you know he's not a monster with horns and a tail or anything like that he's 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 the guy yeah you see you see who you see and it is for you to conclude who you see yeah that that's the that's the mark of a great actor. Yeah. Um, but for a guy who's had so many minor roles, right? Um, it was like he was he was he was being he was preparing for this. Yeah. And when he was offered this role, he took it and said, "This is my big chance," you know. Yeah. And I could see a lot of actors not wanting to take this role. Yes. Uh, uh as an actor i don't know that i would want to take that kind of that that role on um and especially with it being a true story it would be one thing if it was a completely fictional account where you could go well this isn't real so i'm going to put whatever spin on it i want but the fact that this truly happened in this small town in england there there's a level of responsibility there that um is uncomfortable but um he he did a a, a beautiful nuanced performance yeah you're absolutely right about about certain portraying certain characters in in this case a real life character because this week i was reading a story and i'm diverting a bit but i was reading a story about uh jason alexander from uh seinfeld uh, uh, what was his name on seinfeld um george george costanza george, george that's it Right. Jose Costanza, if you remember, he played the, you know, douchey dude, rich dude that attempted to rape the character of uh, the sex worker that Julia Roberts played on Pretty Woman. Yes. And he said that for years after playing that character, he was vilified. Like in real life, a woman actually spat on his face and everything. They would call him names for playing, like for, for the character. Like it, 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 it's an amazing thing. Like, do you really? We wonder how we got where we are. <laughs> I mean, an actor portrayed a character and for years to come, he's out there being, you know, spat on and, 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 violently called names you know so i think you're right actors sometimes i can see why an actor would say no i'm not playing this shit yeah you know yeah but to go on to play a you know a a terrible person you know and win best important actor maybe something that you you never expected because this guy for all intents and purposes, yeah, he's done a lot of TV. He's been in some movies, um, but he's he's no Joe Absalom is, is not, you know, wasn't a household name. 
Right. He's not. A, he's not a Martin Freeman. He's, a, <laughs> he's not. He's not an A-lister. Um, he's kind of a, a that guy, I guess. Like, oh, I know. I've seen you in something. You're that guy from that thing. But um, I hopefully this will bring some attention to his his acting skills and and his uh, his career. Yeah. And speaking of which, why is BBC still doing radio drama? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but it's huge. It's huge over there. Yeah. They, they love their radio drama. My husband is, is a big about? fan of, of all of that. So I don't know. I, 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 I personally can't get into it, but that's just me. But yeah, no, they, they, it's a, it's a big deal over there. I feel like radio drama is almost like the true crime of podcast here. <laughs> What's your podcast about? It's about true crime. Oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> Oh, uh, I kid, I kid the, the troop crime people. I, <laughs> I we keyed, we keyed. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, oh, we go on Facebook and we, we crap all over them. <laughs> Thankfully, <laughs> Justin is not on Facebook. <laughs> I was going to say, isn't that what Facebook is, is a for? Isn't that why it exists? Just to crap <laughs> on something or someone? <laughs> That and cheating on your on your husband or your wife, right? Those are the, <laughs> those well, are the I, other reasons for Facebook. <laughs> yo, I don't know. What, when was the last time you were on Facebook? That's not really. <laughs> it's for disinformation. It, it's for. Uh, yes. It's for Disin Russian trolls and. <laughs> You know. No, it seemed like there was a period there where my husband and I both were were hearing about somebody's. In our in our age group that had found somebody that they'd gone to high school with and left their wife and all their children and found them on Facebook or they'd found some old flame on Facebook and they'd run it was like there was a period of like five years there where Facebook yeah. was was where you were where it was at for for that kind of thing it was uh, I, I remember that time but you were really talking about like early two thousands Jocelyn like uh, yeah, so I'm old well no early two thousand mid two thousands because. Facebook came out in 2006 or 2007, I believe. Or, that makes sense. You yeah. know, and uh, I think up to 2010, it was the whole, I encountered my girl from, you know, my high school sweetheart. My, my untrue love. Yeah. And she's fat now and shit, but I'm cool with that. <laughs> <laughs> She got five babies and she has an opiate addiction and shit, but I'm still I still love her son. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna leave my jewel of a wife that I've had for 30 years. I will be through some shit, but like whatever. <laughs> this is uh, the one that got away. The one that got away, man. And then six months later, like, oh she's no, no good. It didn't work out. Anyway, no, Facebook has changed. <laughs> Facebook. Oh, okay. Facebook. Okay. It's a new Facebook, Jocelyn. It's, it's it a new, a new it's, it's, Facebook. New and improved? Right. This is all about, you know, Russian troll farms and shit in in anti-vaxxerism, you know. <laughs> Trump 2020! <laughs> <laughs> so, in other words, a, a lovely place to be. Right. So, you, yeah, okay. you're, you're, you're missing out. <laughs> I missed out. out on on everything. It's, it's I know, dude. Story of my life. Yeah, I know. you need to get it together, Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right, folks. We, we're gonna end this right here. <laughs> we're gonna call it a day right here. So, thank you very much for watching, and thank you very much for listening. Um, so. If you are watching us on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the little, the little. I keep calling it campaign because you know bell in french is that's <laughs> that's shit <laughs> oh god someday but yeah we truly i truly 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 can't wait uh to have you in studio jojo um even though I, you know we still have we still have a lot of fun doing this over skype and it's not the same it's definitely not the same uh but we're here. We attempt to bring you this content every week. So um, thank you for staying. Thank you for coming back. And uh, 
Yeah, we like y'all. Yeah. <laughs> you can find Jocelyn on on Instagram, which is the only social media she does, and that is at Jocelyn Podcast. Right. And you'll find me <laughs> on Instagram and Twitter at Mr. Puzzetta, M-R-P-U-Z-Z-E-T-T-A. So, I want to thank you for being here today. And uh, if you listen to this episode, the, the podcast version, the um, audio version of it, of course, we're encouraged to give us a review on Apple Podcast or whichever f- uh, platform that you listen on so that other people can find us. Other than that, what else is there to say, Jojo? Have a beautiful day. Yeah. So for me and for Jojo, we're going to call it a day. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.